Have you ever wondered how much your screen time affects your well-being? We're embarking on a journey to unravel the paradox of tech addiction. This is the intriguing scenario where technology, ingeniously crafted to streamline and enrich our existence, can sometimes spiral into compulsive usage, casting a shadow on our well-being. We'll lightly touch on the concept of tech addiction, giving you a taste of what's to come. As we dive deeper into this topic, let's first understand what addiction is in the psychological context. What makes us keep reaching for our devices, even when we know it's too much? This question might seem simple, but the answer lies deep within our brain's complex framework. To understand tech addiction, we first need to grasp the concept of addiction itself. Addiction, in its most basic form, is a psychological phenomenon where an individual becomes dependent on a certain behavior or substance to feel good or avoid feeling bad. It's a powerful force that can override our sense of control, our priorities, and even our understanding of consequences. Central to this process is a little neurotransmitter you might have heard of, called dopamine. Often dubbed the feel-good chemical, dopamine plays a pivotal role in our reward system. It's released when we do something enjoyable, like eating a delicious meal, scoring a goal in a soccer match, or yes, scrolling through our social media feeds or winning a round in a video game. This dopamine release makes us feel good and our brains love feeling good. So they remember what actions led to that dopamine rush and encourage us to do it again. This is how habits form. But here's the catch. Not all habits are harmful. Many, like brushing our teeth, are quite beneficial. The problem arises when these habits become compulsive and begin to interfere with our lives. This is where we cross the line from healthy habits into the realm of addictive behaviors. In the context of technology, addictive behaviors might include spending excessive time on our devices, neglecting other responsibilities or relationships, or experiencing withdrawal symptoms like restlessness or anxiety when we can't access our tech. This understanding of addiction isn't meant to scare us, but rather to arm us with knowledge knowledge that can help us become more mindful of our tech use and its potential pitfalls. Now that we understand the psychological mechanics of addiction, let's explore how this impacts our overall well-being. So, what happens when our screen time starts to dominate our lives? Tech addiction, like any other form of addiction, can have pervasive and detrimental effects on our well-being. These effects span across physical, mental and social aspects of our lives, often diminishing our overall sense of well-being. Let's start with the physical. It's no secret that prolonged screen time can lead to a sedentary lifestyle. We're sitting or lying down for hours on end, often in less than ergonomic positions. This can lead to various health issues, including obesity, cardiovascular diseases, and musculoskeletal disorders. Then there's the issue of sleep deprivation. The blue light emitted by screens can disrupt our sleep patterns, leading to poor quality sleep or even insomnia. Moving on to the mental impacts, research has shown a correlation between excessive tech usage and mental health issues such as anxiety and depression. We're constantly bombarded with information and the pressure to keep up can be overwhelming. Social media in particular can distort our perception of reality, leading to feelings of inadequacy and low self-esteem. Lastly, let's consider the social implications. While technology can connect us with others across the globe, it can also isolate us from those right next to us. We've all seen it, a group of friends at a restaurant, all engrossed in their phones instead of each other. This tech-induced isolation can strain our relationships and lead to feelings of loneliness. In essence, tech addiction can turn our lives into a constant stream of notifications and updates crowding out the time and energy for physical activity, mental peace, and meaningful social interactions. This not only reduces our overall well-being, but also hinders us from living our lives to the fullest. It's clear that tech addiction can have serious effects, but how do we find a balance? Well, stick around, because we're about to delve into that in the next part of our discussion. Is it possible to use our devices without falling into the addiction trap? In the quest for balance, we face the daunting challenge of distinguishing between beneficial and compulsive tech use. Today's digital world is a double-edged sword. On one hand, technology brings us productivity tools, knowledge at our fingertips, 
and the power to connect with people across the globe. On the other hand, it's a Pandora's box of distractions, capable of consuming our time and attention with endless notifications, updates and feeds. The struggle to find balance is not just about technology itself, but about our relationship with it. It's about how we use and interact with our devices, how we let them into our lives, and how we allow them to shape our habits, behaviors, and even our thoughts. The line between using and overusing, between connecting and obsessing, is not always clear, and it's this ambiguity that can make finding balance so challenging. And yet, the responsibility of finding this balance falls squarely on our shoulders. It's about personal responsibility and self-regulation. It's about setting boundaries for ourselves, about knowing when to plug in and when to unplug. But self-regulation is easier said than done, especially when we're up against the constant advancements in tech that are designed to keep us hooked. It's like trying to stay afloat in a sea of constant innovation, where every wave brings a new app, a new feature, a new device that promises to make our lives better, easier, more connected. It's easy to get swept away, to let the current of tech advancements carry us off into a world of constant connectivity and endless screen time. But remember, the power to use technology and not be used by it lies in our hands. It's about making conscious choices about how, when, and why we use our devices. It's about understanding that while technology can enhance our lives, it should not dictate them. Finding balance is tough, but not impossible. Let's discuss some strategies that can help. How can we turn our tech habits from detrimental to beneficial? That's the question on everyone's mind, and the answer lies in practical strategies that can help us manage our tech use effectively. Firstly, setting boundaries is crucial. It's all too easy to lose track of time when we're immersed in the digital world. Setting clear and defined time limits for tech use can help us keep our screen time in check. This could mean dedicating specific hours of the day to technology and strictly adhering to them. It's like setting a budget for your time and sticking to it. Another strategy is using technology mindfully. This means being fully present and intentional with our tech use. Instead of mindlessly scrolling through social media or binge-watching series after series, we should ask ourselves, what is my purpose for using this device right now? Being mindful allows us to use technology as a tool rather than letting it use us. Taking regular breaks is also important. Our brains need time to rest and recharge, and continuous screen time can be overstimulating. Try implementing the 20-20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes, take a 20-second break and look at something 20 feet away. This not only helps to reduce eye strain, but also gives our minds a much-needed break. Creating tech-free zones or times can also be beneficial. This could mean designating certain rooms in your home as tech-free or setting aside specific times of the day where technology is off-limits. This helps to ensure that we have time to engage in other activities that don't involve screens, like reading a book, going for a walk, or simply enjoying some quiet time. However, the most important strategy lies within us – self-awareness. By being aware of our tech habits, we can identify when they start to become problematic. Are we spending more time on our devices than we'd like? Are we feeling anxious or stressed when we're not connected? These are signs that we may need to reassess our tech use. Intentionality is also key. Every time we pick up a device, we should do so with a clear intention. Whether it's to check emails, catch up on news or connect with friends, being intentional helps us stay focused and avoid getting sucked into the black hole of endless scrolling. Remember, it's not about completely eliminating tech, but about using it in a way that enriches rather than diminishes our lives. It's about finding that sweet spot where technology enhances our productivity, connections and enjoyment without compromising our well-being. It's a balancing act, and with these strategies, we can all become tech tightrope walkers. Ultimately, the power to balance screen time and well-being is in your hands. Technology in all its forms is an incredibly powerful tool. It connects us, informs us and often entertains us. Yet, like any tool, its impact is determined by how we wield it. We've explored the psychology of tech addiction, its effects on our well-being and the sometimes arduous journey towards finding balance. But remember, technology doesn't control you, you control it. Reflect on your habits. Are you consuming technology or is it consuming you? 
small changes can lead to big results. A few less minutes scrolling, a couple more spent in the real world. It's about creating a healthier relationship with our devices, where they serve us, not the other way around. So, the next time you reach for your device ask yourself, is this serving my well-being or undermining it?